Hello YouTubers out there, this is Jerry Sadovi at the Movies. So before I begin, I want to give a couple of side notes. Number one, um, there is a young Indiana Jones TV series coming out, according to Disney+. Plus. It may focus on Abner Ravenwood. Those of you who know my channel or know me that uh, I'm a huge Indiana Jones fan, so this is sort of interesting. I don't know what they're going to do with it, but uh, I think many of us probably always wanted to see something about Abner Ravenwood, Marion Ravenwood's father, and it may tie in with uh, this new movie. Maybe some of that will focus, is my feeling, but who knows. Um, so, but I can't, you know, this is all alleged, so it's difficult to do a video on this. So until more information arises, I, I won't really discuss it. As you know, in this channel, I also discuss TV shows and other things infrequently, more frequently than I did in the past. But nevertheless, um, a Blade Runner analysis is forthcoming. Problem is, I can't use footage from the movie. Uh, which I would love to, but I can't. So I'm going to try to do it with really just with still frames, which I've done before. Um, I also have issues with playing these DVDs. I don't know why. Um, I have a brand new little Blu-ray Blu player, <laughs> and I'll try it on that. But uh, the regular DVD player, for some reason, it, it stops at uh, usually the same moment. So it's going to be difficult, but I'll try to get it done. Um, I think that's about it. So I was originally going to review Rob Zombie's Three from Hell, but uh, I chose not to. I did a printed review of it, and I think that's good enough for my blog. It's uh, the worst movie I've seen by Rob Zombie by far, but um, I won't discuss it unless some of you really, really want me to talk about Three, three from Hell. I won't. Um, but uh, the one I want to talk to you today about is Dario Argento's Suspiria came out in uh, 1977 and believe it or not I never saw this movie at my age this is still one of those that I held out for I don't know why um, but I finally got around to it it's the kind of movie that portends something evil and then really delivers only in the last 10 minutes but there's not enough to really keep you invested it's interesting it's a fascinating movie in some ways but it's really, the soundtrack is extremely loud, but not as loud or, let me put it this way, it's far more loud and screeching than the music score for Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, which was accused of being a little obtrusive. Uh, this one is very obtrusive. But anyway, let's get to this story. So Jessica Harper, a very good actress who appeared in... Um, Phantom of the Paradise by Daniel, uh, by Daniel, by Brian De Palma, which is a good movie, um, sort of a variation, a modern day variation at that time anyway, 1974 or five of uh, Phantom of the Opera. So she plays a uh, new student at a German ballet school. Her name is Susie. And Joan Bennett, which is her last role, is presumably the head of the school. And there are a lot of odd ducks at this ballet school. Now, right at the beginning of the movie, the, the, the score by a progressive rock band named Goblin intrudes on the narrative almost immediately. So she's at the airport, she gets a taxi, the music all already starts right at the beginning of this movie. And uh, the car is driving through the rain, it's a taxi, and again, obtrusive, obtrusive, obtrusive. So she sees a woman that's uh, a student that tries to escape from the school. And then she sees her running through the woods and doesn't know what's going on, except that she mentions the words secret and flower. So, but she can't get into school. So Susie arrives at the school the following day and then oh, they've been expecting her and so on. So. It's a ballet school, although interestingly enough, Susie doesn't get to do much ballet dancing at all in this movie. In fact, there's only two small scenes of ballet dancing, extremely small scenes. Um, so it's virtually all female, this uh, particular school. And uh, the only reason I say that is because, of course, there are male ballet dancers. But anyway, okay, maybe that goes without saying. So there's a lot of odd ducks in the school, like the stern ballet teacher who is very stern. She almost looks like a uh, a 
she-wolf, you know, from the Nazi uh, era. And then there's the tall assistant server with false teeth. He looks a lot like Richard Kyle, for those of you who know him as uh, Jaws uh, in the movie Moonraker and Spy Who Loved Me. And he has false teeth due to gingivitis. And then there's a cook who must know something about the school as she holds a glinting knife in one scene. And it sort of strikes... Uh, it gives Jessica Harper's Susie a big headache, and then she can't... She gets sick, and then she can't do the dancing, and this and that and the other. Um, and then there's the blind pianist with seeing eye dog who's fired from the school because the dog bit somebody, even though he believes the dog would never do such a thing. And there are a couple of spoilers here, so sorry, but, uh, you know, I'm assuming a lot of you maybe have seen this if you're a horror fan. The dog eventually, after he's fired, they're walking through this area where it's like an arts center, I guess, sort of, and the dog, something frightens the dog, and then the dog bites the, the guy's neck and then tears it out. It's just, yeah. Um, and there are several female ballet dancers in this movie, but we never really get to, to know them. Uh, the exception may be one played by Stefania Cassini, who's fearing for her life after a while. Um, while warning Susie as something weird is happening in the academy, and then she's later seen falling into razor wire, which is inside of a room. So she gets through a window at the top of a wall in one room and then falls into razor wire. Right at the start of this movie, by the way, there's a, a I think it's that same student that tried to get out of the school, although it could have been another one, I'm not sure. I got confused because I hate to say it, a lot of these female students kind of look like each other and, and, and they seem virtually anonymous to me um, and she's uh, she's at her window and she sees cat's eyes you know it's late at night and then she's stabbed and then she is thrown suspended by a rope and hung um, so this school of course has witches that's really the, the big reveal of this movie and at least it's leading up to it there are witches in this school so Joan uh, Bennett is a, is a witch the stern ballet teacher is a witch. Everybody seems to be a witch except for the students. And then there's this uh, old crone who's been around for at least a century or so who snores like you wouldn't believe and uh, sort of like a growl more than a, snow, a snore when she's sleeping. Um, the, the movie is very well, in terms of art direction and just the visual look of the picture and the camera work, it's exceptional. It's extremely well done. Um, and the colors, especially red, green, and uh, blue are the most prominent colors in this movie. And uh, sometimes they, they seem to slowly appear in, in the background, particularly red, and then it seems to fade out and then it seems to come back. And uh, there's a lot of that. Um, but the problem is to me that Jessica Harper's character is not very interesting. She mostly reacts to what's going on, but uh, in the most cursory ma manner imaginable. Like she was directed to hold back almost as much as possible. And even in scenes where she isn't sick or has a fever, she has the same reaction throughout the whole movie. It's not, uh, there was, there's no subtlety, no nuance. This is not a person that seems to be really affected by what's going on even though she knows something is going on at this school and she can't figure it out. Um, and the music score, again, it's heightened through that, throughout the whole film. But it could have been used more to, in a subtle way, to underscore without overstating. Would have benefited the, the film's uh, power. There, there are powerful moments in the movie. Um, so it has a thrilling conclusion where she finds out what secret and flower mean. And... She finds their hideout because supposedly the teachers and the staff they tell the students that they <laughs> they leave the school every night and go to their homes when in fact they live in the school but in a secret you know uh, hallway somewhere and um, so Jessica Harper is able to tell through their footsteps that she hears that no one ever seems to exit the building. It's Okay, so anyway, um, thrilling conclusion, it has, the whole film feels urgent, 
it has a tense depiction of these murderous horrors. And uh, there is a ten tension through the movie, for sure. But there's not really much more from a narrative standpoint. If you look at Rosemary's Baby, for example, those characters really came through because they had personalities. You really got to know them. You understood where they were coming from. They felt really alive. It felt like a, it was a New York movie, so it really felt alive. And Mia Farrow's character, especially Rosemary, who is definitely affected by what it is that uh, she may or may not be seeing in that movie, although there's definitely witches involved, and the summoning something darker from within. Uh, but you still felt it, and, and you felt it through her. So she was the one we gravitated to, but you weren't sure about John Cassavetes who played her husband and this and that and the other. So this movie, Susie, is just apathetic. It's just, I'm here, I'm at the school, I don't know what's going on. And it's just that same expression through the whole movie. Um, and that just kind of, uh, it angered me away, in a way, because I just thought, this is a waste of a good actress, you know. Why do they do it this way? So, pretty good movie, though, despite all that. Because the art direction and the visual flair of the movie keep you interested. And uh, most of it is well acted, technically. It's just that it feels as if we're kind of from being pulled from, pushed away from it in a way. It just doesn't feel like I, I wasn't, I didn't feel involved enough to really care. But I will say there's still a power to the movie. So it's a odd film, but definitely worth checking out. I've not seen the remake, so I don't know. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Suspiria. Have you seen Suspiria? From 1977 or do you think it should have been remade is the remake worth checking out and uh, what do you think of uh, Jessica Harper and uh, or the films of Dario Argento are there better ones or better films about witches I don't know whatever it is please let me your thoughts please subscribe to my channel and this is Jerry Sadovia at the movies signing off